Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with braised lamb with radishes and mint. That's right, this might look like a fairly standard platter of meat and potatoes, but in reality, this Basque-inspired braised lamb dish was one of the most interesting, unique, and delicious things I've made in a long time. And those glistening beauties that look like fingerling potatoes are actually radishes. So while the ingredient list might appear to be a little bit bizarre, do not let that throw you off. This was really amazing. So let's go ahead and get started with our lamb. And the cut we're using here is called lamb shoulder chops. And yes, those are some big ones. Those are about 12 ounces each. So a little lamb might be fine for Mary, but not for this recipe. We really want to use some nice, big, thick, meaty chops here. And of course, we're going to have to season these up. So we're going to make a little bit of a spice blend here, starting with some kosher salt, into which we'll mix some nice Spanish paprika, as well as some freshly ground black pepper. We'll also do a little cayenne for a little bit of heat. Plus, we haven't used any in the last couple videos, and people are getting a little twitchy. And then we'll give that a mix, and we will generously season both sides of this lamb. And by the way, I'm basing this on an appetizer I had at a Basque restaurant recently, and they actually used lamb belly for this, which was beautiful. But since we are doing a main course, I decided to go with the shoulder chops, which are still nice and fatty and flavorful, but just a lot meatier. And once we have those seasoned, we'll head over to the stove, where we're going to brown these over high heat in a little bit of olive oil, very thoroughly on both sides. And of course, we could just stand at the stove watching those brown, wasting valuable time. But I have a better idea. While our lamb is browning, let's go ahead and prep our radishes. So don't always think you have to prep everything before you start a recipe. If there's a step that's going to take seven or eight minutes, like the browning, Use that time to get one of the other ingredients ready. That is just good time management. And by prepping the radishes, all we mean is scrub them very well because we're not peeling them, so make sure they're nice and clean. And then we will trim the tops off, but I do like to leave a little bit for appearances. And then sometimes there's a little bit of a dark band right around the top that looks like dirt. It's not dirt, but it looks like dirt. So sometimes I'll go around to give that a little scraping if necessary. And then other than trimming off that little tap root, our radishes are prepped. And in case you're wondering, these are called breakfast radishes. So I'm not sure how this would work with the regular red radishes. But breakfast radishes are fairly easy to find. So our radishes are prepped. And we'll head back over to the stove because by now our lamb should be browned. So what we'll do is we'll turn our heat to low. We will remove the lamb and preserve it. At which point we're going to add the three ingredients that form the base of this sauce. And those would be sherry vinegar, sugar, and anchovies. All right, let me give you a moment to compose yourself while I repeat that. The base of the sauce is sherry vinegar, white sugar, and anchovies. And long story short, what we're making here is basically homemade MSG. And while I admit it does seem like a little bit of a strange combination, it works unbelievably well here. And we'll take a spoon and we'll mix that all together. And once it gets to about this stage, we'll turn our heat to medium low and cook this stirring until it reduces down to basically what looks like a syrup. Or syrup, as I believe it's pronounced in English. And what we're looking for is something that resembles this. All right, so it's reduced down to a fairly thick and sticky substance. Ooh, check it out. I bet people think those spoon marks in the pan look like something. But anyway, once this glutamation sensation has been created, we will go ahead and pour in some chicken broth or stock, and we'll stir that in, and that's going to basically deglaze our glaze. And at that point, we can raise our heat to high because we want to bring this up to a simmer before adding our lamb back in. And while we're waiting for that, we can add the last couple ingredients. We're going to do a little bit of freshly and finely chopped rosemary as well as a little touch of cinnamon, which is going to give this a great little subtle sweet background note. And speaking of sweetness, I decided to not do any sautéed onions in this. And I don't have time right now, but I will explain that thought process on the blog post. So we'll stir that in. And once our mixture is simmering, we'll go ahead and add our lamb back in, along with, of course, any accumulated juices. And then before we cover this and pop it in the oven, we're going to have to place in our radishes. So just go ahead and distribute those between your chops, wherever you see an open space, and then once our radishes have been successfully introduced, we're going to cover this and roast it nice and slowly until tender. So let's put that in a 275 degree oven for approximately three hours. And what we'll want to do about halfway through is pull it out and turn our pieces of lamb over. And I should mention, like most braised dishes, this does not look good until it looks good. Okay, so don't be concerned with any temporary ugliness. So we'll give those a flip, cover it back up, and pop it back in until basically the meat is tender which, like I said, should take about three hours, give or take. And this is what mine looked like at that point. Okay, we don't want the meat falling apart. But as you can see, that connective tissue between the muscles has broken down. And what we'll do is we'll turn this over one more time before finishing this uncovered. And one clue you're ready to proceed with this last step is that those shoulder bones will be very easy to pull out of the meat. And we can remove those if we want. If they stay in, I leave them in because I like the presentation. But anyway, we will flip those over. 
And then to finish, we're going to crank our oven up to 425 and pop these back in uncovered for about 15 to 20 minutes or until nicely browned and looking something like this. And I'm sure it will be, but you definitely want to check to make sure your meat is fork tender at this point. If it's not, cook it more. You are the boss of your Basque inspired braises. So you make the call, but mine was perfectly tender. And at that point, we will remove our lamb and radishes to a serving platter and keep that warm while we finish our sauce. And what we mean by finish the sauce is simply reduce it over high heat until it thickens slightly. And while that happens as usual, you have the recommended optional step of skimming any pools of fat from the top, which I like to do. But anyway, like I said, we're gonna reduce this on high heat. And when it starts to thicken up and it looks like it's getting close, I will reduce the heat to low. So I have a little better control of this situation. And right here you can see what I think is the optimum viscosity. And at that point, what we'll do is we'll turn off the heat and add the last two ingredients, some freshly sliced mint leaves, or as we would call it in culinary school, a chiffonade of mint. And then last but not least, a cold chunk of butter. And as you know, once that goes in, we gotta keep everything moving so that fat emulsifies into the sauce. So keep that pan moving, you can shake it, you can stir it, it doesn't matter. Any kind of agitation will do. And as soon as that butter's disappeared and we've tasted for final seasoning, we will go ahead and spoon that over our lamb and radishes. And that was one sexy sauce. Look at that glistening at us. So gorgeous and shiny. And then we'll go ahead and finish with the obligatory sprig of mint. And that Basque inspired braised lamb with radishes is done. And we will get to the meat in a minute, but I have to start by tasting one of these radishes, which are just amazing. They're earthy, they're sweet, they're aromatic, just absolutely delicious. And to think all these years I've been eating radishes raw like an idiot. So I really do think you're gonna enjoy those very much. And as far as the lamb goes, it's really hard to describe just how good this was. I mean, as you would expect from a braising technique, the meat is very succulent, very moist. It just melts in your mouth. And the taste, thanks to all those naturally occurring glutamates, is what we call in the business a flavor bomb. Just incredibly savory. And while it does take a few hours to cook, it is very easy to make, extremely tasty and absolutely gorgeous. I mean, come on, look at that. I was gonna say bask in its glory, but I'm not a big fan of puns. They are considered the lowest form of humor. So I will simply finish by saying I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.